Let's talk about Jaguars, the Roadster specifically, because that's one hell of a resume. The Jaguar XK120. It was a pioneer in car design and became the fastest production car when it came out in the late 1940s. Then came the C-Type, a race car that had the heart of an XK120 and was super slippery through the air, thus helping it win Le Mans twice. Then came the D-Type, quite possibly the most iconic British Le Mans racer ever and then came the E-Type. It was such a good looking and revolutionary car that even the man himself Enzo Ferrari couldn't resist but say that it was the most beautiful machine in the world. So when they fell into financial trouble in 2013, they thought to themselves, wait, let's just do something that we're actually good at for once. And they came up with this, the Jaguar F-Type. Nine years on, it's safe to say that this car actually saved Jaguar globally. But how does it fare in today's standards? Hello, my name is Bhavni Daswani. Welcome to The Drivers Up and you're watching Auto Culture. Now this background music that you're listening to sums up the looks of the Jaguar F-Type very well. Smooth and clean lines all over, some really well sculpted haunches, a very pretty face and an attractive rear end. The front grille harks back to the Jags of old and the rear bumper has the classic upswept British overhang. The design is very British and has been designed by none other than Ian Callum, the same guy who designed the stunning Aston Martin DB9, the CX-75 the Escort Cosworth and many more iconic cars. But what's under the hood is probably one of the most anti-social, obnoxious and bewildering V8s you will ever hear. the clamshell bonnet, you can spot this really cramped V8. This is a 5-litre supercharged V8. But this is the driver's hub and best believe this is modded. The pulley has been upgraded. The air intake has been upgraded. This stock used to make 488 bhp but now it makes 550 horsepower. That's not it. This still doesn't have a final tune. So when you actually tune this, it's going to be pushing out 600 bhp that's more than the svr and i'm just too excited to drive it so let's just do that so if you guys haven't noticed this is a convertible but i want to talk to you guys a little bit about the car so what i'm going to do is start the engine but also lift the roof so that you guys can hear me and have a little bit of privacy All right, so I'm going to come clean with you guys. This is my first time driving a car with this aspiration, uh, supercharged. I've driven turbocharged cars with the same power. I've driven naturally aspirated cars with the same power, but I have never experienced a supercharger with this much power. This time, this car has 550 horsepower. and it is delivered so linearly. It doesn't, it's like a proper mixture between turbo and naturally aspirated. It feels so analog, but it still is very responsive. And that is very addictive. Whoa. 63. The rear is lively. The rear likes to step out if you are uh, a little too aggressive. But 550 horses, so you expect that when it's only going to the rear wheels. 
it's actually very fun because you can feel the rear sliding out and just feels so different it's like a mixture of naturally aspirated and turbocharged it's very linear but it is aggressive at the same time and it's electric the engine is very responsive and the revs go up very very nicely all of the power is available at the entire rev range so you it doesn't feel like the engine is running out of steam even at the higher gears and that is quite a scary experience but that's what you want from a sports car something something that doesn't bore you quickly and this definitely doesn't with some suspension upgrades the full system quick silver exhaust and the air intake this car doesn't let you breathe because it's just so ready to go and i love the fact that that's what it wants to do when it comes to the corners the f type feels very flat but because this is a rear wheel drive car spank it a bit too hard and it will slap you so I, this is not my car i am being very respectful but put your foot down and the rear loves to step out but it is very well sorted even when it steps out it feels good it feels manageable if you don't want something like a mainstream boxster or maybe an m2 competition think of one of these because this is a very different experience but it's not a bad one at all and i for one am loving the jaguar f type it's so poised it's polished and it's very livable and its versatility is exactly what's gotten my attention thank you so much for watching it's your boy bavneet i'll see you in the next one